Hi, welcome back. Well, let's move on to market action. It's a holiday on the Lal Street with traders getting a knock due to Mahashivratri. However, the Asian indices, they are up and running and they are posting some good gains. Shanghai seeing gains of around 1.12 odd percent. Hang Seng also higher by six tenths of a percent. Nikkei also very healthy gains of around one odd percent. And this is because they are uh, they are incremental hopes that this US-China trade talks will go ahead. We'll also bring up Kospi, Taiwan and the Straits Times for you. While an hour back, the Straits Times and Kospi, they were not doing so well. So it was a mixed picture. So Kospi right now also down with two tenths of a percent of cuts. Taiwan also seeing some uh, cuts. But Straits, that has actually accentuated those gains, is up around nine tenths of a percent. So overall, the picture for Asian markets is looking good as of now. But let's move on back home in a significant move for India Inc. Market regulator SEBI has tightened the rules for corporate debt restructuring. No company can now be exempt from open offer rules while making an acquisition. An exception will be made only in the case of lenders taking over a company. The SEBI board ha also took a slew of other decisions and yes, Jen is here with the details. Yes, let's start with the open offer rules getting tightened. Explain what SEBI has done and why this move is so significant. In a lot of clarifications and important amendments coming through in SEBI's board meeting and the most crucial, as you rightly mentioned, would be on the corporate debt restructuring part. To start with, SEBI has very importantly clarified that an exemption from uh, the, the preferential issue pricing which comes under SEBI ICDR regulations as well as exemption under takeover regulations which gives the open offer exemption will only be granted to financial institutions as well as banks and not to any other party uh, or individual or entity uh, as far as uh, involvement in CDR is concerned. So what that means is only when a financial institution or a bank uh, carries out a corporate debt restructuring where it converts the debt into equity and the stake goes beyond 51% in an entity, only that bank and financial institution will get an exemption under the preferential issue pricing as well as open offer exemption and no other individual or party. Of course, another important point would be that open offer exemption will only be granted uh, if the takeover transaction which is being done is being directed by a court or a tribunal and not by any other competent authority, uh, which essentially means that only when a court or a tribunal directs a takeover transaction is when uh, open offer exemption will be granted and no other competent authority. The interpretation of competent authority could be uh, sectoral regulators or government for that matter. And just so that this particular point is very clear, I would put an example to this. Uh, in a transaction like uh, LIC, IDBI Bank, where LIC raised its stake beyond 51% in IDBI Bank, no open offer exemption would be granted because that wasn't a court or a tribunal directed takeover transaction, but it was a government directed takeover transaction. So no ta uh, open offer exemption there. This was a very important part of SEBI's board meeting on the corporate debt restructuring part. But apart from that, of course, regulations uh, relaxed as far as REITs and NVIDs are concerned. Uh, there have been modalities which have been decided which make them more attractive as an instrument. Uh, SEBI has also approved the participation from mutual funds as well as portfolio managers when it comes to commodity derivatives. So another important development to, to increase the depth in the commodity derivative market. Thanks a lot for that, Yash. And let's move on. If you are a salaried employee, here's a Supreme Court ruling that may impact your enhanced salary, but leave you a higher retirement corpus. The Apex Court has ruled that employers cannot exclude special allowances from basic pay while calculating their contribution to Provident Fund. Prashant Nair has all the details. Uh, this is a pretty landmark uh, judgment from the Supreme Court, which uh, has uh, the potential to impact, uh, you know, uh, 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 many uh, people around the country, uh, especially in certain industries like uh, manufacturing, etc. And I'll explain why. Uh, I mean, the judgment per se is uh, essentially looks at the aspect of what is the pay which should be taken, what is the basic salary which should be taken on which the provident fund contribution should be calculated on. I mean, that's essentially. Uh, what the question before the Supreme Court was. Uh, now, this is what the Supreme Court is actually saying. Supreme Court is saying that special allowance is part of uh, basic pay. Uh, they're saying that uh, allowances in question, essentially part of the basic wage, were camouflaged by employers, by companies to avoid deduction and PF contribution. 
appeals by establishments, which is corporations who were sort of arguing against this in the court, therefore merit no uh, interference. Appeal preferred uh, by the Regional Provident Fund Commissioner deserves to be allowed. This was EPFO, which had gone to court a couple of years ago. I mean, this is not a new matter. It has, it has been in the court for the last many years. And now the Supreme Court is coming out and saying, well, for the purpose of calculating what should be the total basic salary on which both the employer contribution and employee contribution should be uh, calculated on needs to be the total legitimate basic pay, which includes basic salary plus special allowance. Let's just rewind a little bit and tell you what used to happen. Uh, I mean, the, the, the law essentially says that if the basic salary is up to 15,000 rupees, then PF has to be calculated at 12%. I mean, the employer contributes 12%. The employee, uh, I mean, 12% of uh, is, is also contributed by the employee. Uh, but in reality, I mean, what used to happen is that the, if, I mean, for example, if somebody pays 15,000 rupees, um, uh, lots of companies used to split that 15,000 rupees into, uh, you know, some uh, which was classified as basic salary and other as special allowance. I mean, so uh, you could uh, take, I mean, uh, you could sp split 15 into 9 and 6, 9 basics, a basic and 6 as special allowance. What that allowed companies to do is basically uh, pay or contribute only 12% on 9,000 rupees, which was classified as basic income, uh, b basic salary. What the Supreme Court is now saying is that, well, you can't do that. You have the definition of basic pay includes all emoluments, including special allowance. So uh, if the, if uh, you, so 9,000 basic salary go going, uh, uh, sort of uh, looking at the previous example, you have to add that 6,000 rupees to it. And then you have to uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, calculate the contribution of the employer 12% uh, as a percentage of 15,000. Uh, I mean, so, you know, prima facie, this will impact anybody who, whose salary is within that 15,000 odd rupee mark, domestic, all domestic workers, basically, whose salary is uh, uh, sort of up to 15,000 rupees. Uh, you know, if your pay is over 15,000, contribution is anyway voluntary. I mean, you may actually choose to contribute at, at 15,000, or you can actually take the full salary. Uh, if it is higher than 15, so be it and choose to contribute at the rate of 12%. Uh, Thanks a lot for that, Prashant. With that, we wrap this edition of News Now. Thank you for watching the show and stay tuned to CNBC TV 18.